Elon Musk has filed a new notice to cancel his purchase of Twitter, this time due to a whistleblower. That's right. The complaint filed by former Twitter security chief Peter Mudge Zatko alleges that the social media giant mishandled data and put the company's users at risk. Twitter responded to Musk by saying his filing is, quote, based solely on statements made by a third party that, as Twitter has previously stated, are riddled with inconsistencies and inaccuracies and lack important context. So for more on all of this, let's bring in Rick Jordan. He is CEO of Reach Out Technology and an MSP investor. Rick, great to see you. So can you, first of all, expand on these security risks that this whistleblower at Twitter, uh, you know, supposedly un uncovered? Sure, you bet. This goes back 10 years a little over that to a 2011 deal that Twitter made with the FTC. This is the crazy part, right? To not mislead customers over security principles for a period of 20 years. The FTC said they were barred for 20 years, but then it makes no sense because what happens after 20 years, right? They can mislead people again. That's the crazy phrasing that they have. But when Mr. Zatko was held, hired, by the way, his hacker name, his pseudonym is called Mudge. That's how he kind of goes in the community. It's pretty funny. <laughs> but he found a lot of security inconsistencies with the company. And Twitter was even facing a $150 million fine for breaking these agreements that they had with the FTC when Mr. Mudge or, or Mr. Zatko was hired back a couple years ago by Jack Dorsey. Everything from accessibility to user accounts, private data, uh, attacks from the outside by what we call threat actors, just a whole slew of security inconsistencies. So, Rick, uh, we've heard a lot about this whole Twitter deal, Elon Musk, and lots of people I think are probably just like, oh, what's happening now? Because Tuning previously he tried to, to get out of the deal by citing the number it's of bots like on the website. Opera. It is. Yeah. Like a yeah. yeah. So with this latest turn, this twist now, do you think he's going to have better luck citing these issues that Mudge brings up about security? I think it's a good tactic for him to try to back out of the deal. If you look at the deal as a whole, I mean, we're on Money Watch, right? If you look at the deal as a whole, it's not a bad deal for shareholders. If all the data and everything is as Twitter says that it is, $44 a share to buy this company out or $44 billion is not a bad deal. It's a premium. It's a good deal for the shareholders, though, if everything is how it says it is. But We've seen the markets crash since then. This is a good tactic to try to back out of the deal or at least renegotiate the price. The filing that they made again was like a, a redundant letter just in case the first one filed on July 8th when Mr. Musk tried to back out just doesn't hold water in court. So it's kind of a it's kind of a backup plan. We might end up seeing a backup to a backup. This is not the end of this. We'll probably see this in October in trial. So, Rick, if we if we put aside all of this back and forth between you know, Twitter shareholders and Elon Musk, what about the actual Twitter users? Will any of this affect them? I hope so. <laughs> and I say that in uh, in a scenario because when Zatko or Mudge, as we call him, was actually employed by Twitter, he found that 50 percent of the company internally still had access to private user data. Ooh. That's a lot. That means every one out of two employees at Twitter, and Twitter has 11,000 employees, could access your personal data from your Twitter account. Mm -hmm. To me, as a Twitter user, that's kind of crazy. I wouldn't want that. And so I hope that this is kind of Mudge's or Mr. Zatko's MO in the 90s. He would be hired by software companies to fix bugs when they wouldn't or they would delay. He would go public with them. So this is something he's been doing, a tactic he's been using now for 30 years. It works. So I hope that the biggest winners out of this are the Twitter users like you and me. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I don't, I don't want Twitter employees accessing my personal information either. So 50%, 50%, right? 50 percent of them can see it. Yeah, we're all, all in the, right. we're all on the same page with that one. Yeah, Rick Jordan, <laughs> thanks for joining. You bet. Thanks.